Hey guys, so today we're continuing on with our day and night cycle, and we're going to give it a bit more complexity now. So what I'm planning to do is have distinct phases of the day, right? So the sunrise, day, sunset, and night. And then it will loop back, of course, to the start of the next day. And in each of these phases, I want the color to be fading between certain colors, and I want the light to be getting darker or lighter. Now, I'm going to say from the outset that I actually coded this system a few different ways, and in the end, I've stuck with the one that I thought was the simplest to understand, but there are definitely more elegant and flexible ways that you can code this, and I'll try and include examples as we go. And this kind of system is one of those things that, in retrospect, it can be easy enough to understand, but it's quite another thing to create this yourself from scratch. So I want to try and step you through the thought process a little bit of how to actually make this. So let's think about everything we need to make the system work. So think back to some of the variables that we've already set up. So we have a darkness variable that controls how dark it is, because remember we were just drawing a big rectangle over the screen. So this darkness just corresponds to the alpha value of that rectangle. So a darkness of one means the rectangle will be fully opaque, completely dark, and zero is invisible, no darkness. We also have a light color variable that we set up, and this controls the color of the rectangle. And at the moment, we just had that set to black. And we also have our time set up, and we have separate variables for the seconds, minutes, and hours. So at the moment, we're just making the darkness be a fraction of the hours in the day, so that we get a darker day as the day goes on, and it's always some fraction between zero and one. But what we're going to do is break the day into four separate phases. We want some different kind of behavior depending on what phase we're in. So one thing that we have to do is specify what our phases are and when they begin. And we could do that as an array or a numerator. And I'm just going to use an enumerator here. So I'm just going to call the enumerator phase. And then I'm going to make the constants all of my phases of the day. And I'm going to make each of them equal the hour in the day that the phase begins. So you can put whatever values you want here. I'm going to put sunrise starting at 6 a.m. And then the daytime starting at 8.5, which is just going to be 8.30. The sunset will begin at 6 o'clock, which is going to be 1800, so 18. And nighttime, which is when I basically want there to just be complete darkness, I'm just going to make that 10 p.m., which is 22. Another variable I'm actually just going to add is max darkness. I actually don't want complete darkness, and I'm going to set that to 0.7, and that's going to be the maximum opacity for our rectangle. And again, you can put whatever value you want. Maybe you do want it completely dark. And just while we're testing our system today, I'm going to also turn down the time increment to 100, just so that the day is going a bit slower so we can check that all the colors and the light is working properly. All right, so we've set up our phases. Now let's just add some logic for getting what phase we're in. So we kind of we can get rid of this because we don't need that anymore. And I might actually just add a region to this so that we don't have to worry about that anymore. All right, and I'm also going to add, so do you remember how last time we had this variable draw daylight so that we could control whether we're actually drawing the daylight in a room that was inside? We were switching this off if it found that we were inside. I'm also going to wrap everything that we do today in the same little condition because there's no point doing any of this stuff if we're not actually going to draw the daylight. This is going to be all the stuff controlling, setting up how dark and what color to draw everything. But we do want to keep our cycle check as not part of this draw daylight because we do still want the time to be incrementing and the days to be continuing, even if we're inside. Now we need to get what phase that we're currently in. And like I said before, there is a lot of ways that you could do this. So for example, if it's currently 12 o'clock midday, then we know we are in the daytime cycle. So we know that if we are between daytime and sunset, we'll be in the daytime. And if it's say seven in the morning, we know that because we're between sunrise and daytime, we're still in the sunrise phase. So we can kind of just go, if hours is between these two phases, then we know we're in the sunrise. And let's just do that for all of the rest. So that's those three, but for the nighttime, it's, we have to be a bit careful. Nighttime is going from the hours of 22, 23, and then when it hits 24, it's going to reset back to zero. So we can't really say 
if hours is greater than nighttime and less than sunrise, because both of those things can't be true. But since we've already set up all of the rest of our cases, we don't really need to check any particular logic. We can just say, if it's not any of these, then it must be nighttime. So we really just have to put else. All right, so now remember how I said that during each cycle, we might want to change between a few colors. So for example, during sunrise, I might want to change from a kind of dark blue into a nice orange for the sunrise. And then maybe during the day, I'll change from that orange to a white. And the same goes for the darknesses. So I might want to change from our max darkness value, which remember we set at 0.7 or whatever you set it to. So during sunrise, I want to change from the max darkness to something close to zero during the sunrise. And then during the day, I want to change to no darkness at all. So for each phase, we might have a different number of colors and opacities for the darkness that we want to change to. And I'm actually just going to make an array that stores all of the darkness values and all of the colors that we want for each phase. And then depending on what phase we're in, we'll use whatever values that we have in those arrays. So I'm going to set up right here some local variables called darks. So that's going to be the array that stores all of our dark values and colors. So we'll be playing around with these a little bit later, but if you want to just follow what I have set up for now. So for daytime, I'm going to put darks as equal to we're going from complete darkness or almost complete darkness up to a pretty light value. And for my colors, GameMaker comes with a bunch of sort of stock colors right here. But if you want to make other colors, there are a few functions for making it. So you can use make color and then you can specify these right here. But I'm actually just going to use something called merge color. And this basically will merge the two colors according to some amount, right? It's actually between zero and one. And so by putting 0.3, I'm saying it's mostly black, but it's got a little bit of navy in it. If I'd put one, it would have been completely navy and zero would be completely black. So I'm merging those colors for that one. So getting a quite dark blue and also just orange. So those are my two colors for the sunrise. And I'm just going to add a bunch of other values for our other times of day. And just as a note, for the system that we're setting up, you don't have to make the number of entries in the darks array and the colors array the same. So right here, I've got two entries in the darks array, but three colors, that's totally fine. We're going to make everything work no matter how many you've got in either. And finally, for the night. So like I said, because of the way that I've set this up, we're not going to be able to have any color changing during the night. It's going to just stay as one color. So we're going to have to just put one entry for each of those arrays. And I might also just put another region here so that we don't have to look at any of that while we do the next section. So I'm just going to call that phases and variables. All right, and now we're going to actually alter our darkness variable, depending on what phase that we're in. Actually, it's not just darkness, it's darkness and colors. All right, and then there'll be two sections in here, colors and darkness. So now that we've set up these arrays here, we kind of want to get which one we should be currently accessing. So for the day, for example, if we're in the middle of the cycle, we want to be accessing these two variables here. And if we're towards the start, we want to be accessing these variables. So we need to get where we are in the cycle. And of course, because our cycles, their length is going to be different. So the cycle between the sunrise cycle only lasts for two and a half hours, but the daytime cycle lasts for about 10 hours. So we're getting varying cycle lengths. So we're going to have to take that into account. So what we're going to do is now we're going to use a bit of maths here. So to get where we are in the cycle, so let's say that it's currently 10 o'clock. How am I going to get as a fraction kind of where we are in the cycle between zero and one? Are we like halfway through or two thirds or what? So what we're going to want to do is go is we know the cycle starts at 8.5. So we want to take that away from the hours. So we know now that we're just 1.5 hours into the cycle. To turn that into a fraction of the cycle as a whole, we just need the length of the cycle. So that would be wherever the end of the cycle is. So 18 minus 8.5. So we have hours minus the start of the phase up the top, and then the end of the phase minus the start of the phase down the bottom. 
And that gives us a fraction of where we are in the cycle. But we don't have those variables, the start of the phase and the end of the phase yet. We kind of know what that is because of here, it's just gonna be these two for whatever cycle we have. And this is what I was talking about before with there's more elegant ways that you could set this out where we could just here, just find what phase we're in. What we're gonna do is just explicitly state it for each case. So I'm gonna set up two more variables phase start and phase end, and we're just gonna set those for each of these. All right, so now we can write in the equation that we made before. So we can go hours minus P start, and then that will be over P end minus P start. So that's gonna get the fraction of where we are in the cycle. And now to access the correct place in our array. So for example, if it's the daytime, then there is five entries in my array. So there's entry zero, one, two, three, four, right? So I want one of these entries. So if I times this number here, so right now this is a number between zero and one, but if we times this by the length of our array, well, length of our array, minus one, because our entries start at zero, then that is gonna give us the correct kind of place in our array that we want. So this whole thing is gonna give me a number between zero and four. And of course it will work exactly the same for any of these. So no matter what phase we're in, because we're just getting the array length, we're gonna get the appropriate number. But as you probably noticed, we're gonna get a lot of decimals with this. And we can't actually access, say for example, for this one that has two entries, zero and one, we can't get like 0 0.5. There is no entry 0 0.5. So we kind of want to get whatever this number is, we want to get the flawed number, which will be the array entry, so zero, and then the seal of this number, which will be one, and then we want to merge those two to get the right color. So let's just add that in. So I'm just going to save this value in a local variable. So I'm just going to call this CC, right, as the color that we want. And now I'm going to get those two numbers that I said before. So I'm going to get the array entry below and above this number here, which is probably going to be a decimal. So like that, we're getting the entry of our colors array at this flawed CC variable here. And now finally, so we want to set light color to be the merging of these two colors here. But now what amount do we want? So we have to give it a number between zero and one. And I want this merging of the color to be relative to sort of how close to each entry that we are. So let's say for example, that it was daytime and it was quite close to the end of daytime. So my CC value is getting something close to, so remember there were five entries in the array. And let's say we were, we were getting 3.5 or something from this. So we were between these last two numbers. So then these two values here will be giving us three and four. So we want a mixing of, well, they're both orange, but if they weren't, we would get a mix between these two. And you can see that it's gonna be however close that decimal point is to three or four. So we can take away the flawed number of CC to get the decimal number we want between zero and one. All right, and now we do exactly the same for the darkness. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it here. And we just have to change that to darks. And I'm just gonna use D for clarity and consistency. And not light color that we're changing here, but darkness. And that's all good, except we're using this function merge color and these aren't colors. So for the darkness, we're using just numbers these numbers here. And we don't really have a function that merges numbers together. So I'm actually gonna get us to write our own script that does this. So come into your scripts and we're gonna create a new one called merge number. And just like the merge color one, we're gonna input the same thing. So we're gonna get it to input two numbers that you wanna merge and then the amount to merge them between zero if you want this number and one if you want that number or a mix for something in between. So let's just write in some information about it. 
So I'll write in what it's called and all of the arguments. Now if you come back to here and change this to number, our script should be coming up here. Yep, and those arguments are all coming up. So let's just get all of the arguments and put them into some variables just so that we can make sense of them a little bit better. And now we'll just write it out first and I'll explain it afterwards. So here we're just getting the difference between number one and number two if number one is two and number two is three, we're going to get a difference of minus one. So really one is the difference and we could use the absolute value of our result, which will just make everything positive. So the difference between two and three or three and two is one. But this thing down here is going to correct for that anyway, of whether this is a negative or positive number. Then on the second line, we're going to get two minus the difference, which was one, and multiplied by the amount that we're merging. So if we put in 0.5, we're going to get minus one times 0.5. So that's minus 0.5. And the end result is two minus minus 0.5. So we get 2.5. And if you play around with those numbers, you're going to see that it's going to work for any configuration, even if number one is bigger than number two or number two is bigger than one, it's not going to matter. Again, there's different ways that you could code this, but that's just the way that I've done it. All right, so that's our merge number script. We can come back to here, but there is one more thing that we have to do. So now, do you remember back when I was saying the night case is gonna be a little bit weird? And that's because the P start, oops, we've actually entered that in incorrectly. So it should be starting at nighttime and we're ending in the morning. So the P start, the night time, which was equal to 22, is actually much bigger than the sunrise time, which is six. And that's actually going to stuff up all of our sums here, because all of this is sort of relying on the P end being larger than the P start. And again, this is one of those places where you could be a little bit more efficient than what I'm going to do, because I'm just going to put in a separate case for the night time. So I'm just going to go if phase start is equal to nighttime, so that means we're in the nighttime phase, and I'm just going to set light color to equal that one entry in our array. And that's why I was saying that it could only be one entry. And again, you could change this, you could make it so that you could have multiple colors over the nighttime. Go ahead if you're feeling confident enough to do that, but it's not absolutely necessary, so I'm not going to bother at the moment. So now all we have to do is say, otherwise, for all the other cases, we can do our math here. And we'll do the same for the darkness. Okay, now we're actually done. And all that's left to do is actually just to test this. So let's run the game. All right, so if we hit T, let's start the clock. Okay, good, so it's changed to the night phase. And it's changed to the sunrise. We can see it fading between the sunrise colors, midday and sunsets now, and into night. There we go. So now that we have everything set up, you can probably more confidently play around with the numbers. I know this one was a little bit more tricky, but we're done. And hopefully we can move on to some more fun stuff next time, like the inventory. I'd like to thank everyone on Patreon who was supporting me to create these tutorials. And a special shout out to 3D Monkey Biz, Danielle Hargrave, Max Molinaro, and Uthelian for their support. Thank you for watching, guys. That's all for today. I'll see you next time.